there's, um, there's a lot of things that annoy me about how live music used to be in London and one of them is there were so many great venues, for example there's the Chelsea Drugstore, it's a famous place in the King's Road, mentioned in Rolling Stones, can't always get what you want, it's now McDonald's in the King's Road and so is the Red Line in Brentford which is a great live venue but saddest of all the Roxy Club, probably one of the most famous clubs in the history of the world, is now the Speedo's place. Just been down in the basement and I want to tell you a few stories about the Roxy. First of all, not many people know, it was Gene October, the singer in Chelsea, that started the Roxy because he was, it was a gay club called Shagaramas and he convinced the then manager, Andy Krasovsky, to put on punk rock. And Chelsea were going to be the first band to play there. Unfortunately for Gene, Billy Idol, Billy Idol was the guitarist then, and Tony James and John Tower, the drummer, sacked Gene and formed Generation X. And they did the first gig at the Roxy. And Gene was ousted, even though he is responsible for starting the club. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing, an amazing place. I remember the first time I came in here, um, it was when the, the Sex Pistols had literally just signed to EMI and I was, there was a bar upstairs and the venue was downstairs and Johnny Rotten came running in in like this vivid yellow mohair jumper and everyone there, Johnny, Johnny, he's like, I haven't got any money, I haven't got any money. And uh, yeah, that was, that was just a funny time. Everyone used to hang out here, it was a really, really cool music venue. It was just had a, you know, it was a unique vibe. And uh, another funny thing happened that Chelsea, when we played here, we played here a couple of times, we played here later on in October 77, by then, the punk thing was already sort of petering out, to be honest. And uh, we had a band called The Makers opening for us. And um, a couple of years later, I was playing with Kim Wilde and I was doing this, all these um, Europe TV shows all over Europe. And uh, there was this big expose in the New Musical Express saying that the Spandau Ballet had been a punk rock group called The Makers. And I was doing this TV show in Germany, I think it was, and uh, I went up to Steve Norman, who's a sax player band there now, he's one of my best friends, and uh, I said, this is true that you used to be The Makers, because you wrote for us, and he said, it's the biggest lie, it's just the NME, just telling lies, making up stories, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, about five years ago, he said to me, James, I've got a confession to make. We were the makers, and uh, because obviously Spandau Ballet couldn't admit that before they were Spandau Ballet, they were a punk group supporting Chelsea and the Roxy, which I think they could have admitted because it's actually quite a cool thing. Anyway, that's what he said to me. Let's get down into the basement. Yeah, so as you came in through the front door there, there used to be, it used to be the reception, you used to pay again, you used to come down these stairs down here, it's always really dark, and you come down, there'd be the DJ booth just up against this wall here, it's where Don Letts used to be DJing, stage at the front there, and what can I say, what can I say, I mean, this, <laughs> this is how the modern world has gone, um, anyway it makes me sad, I hung out here a lot, it's a really really cool place, now it's like, um, you can buy your shorts here if you want, that'll do. Right, so here we are, Silicon Garden, and um, yeah, what I was saying about the homogenisation of live venues in the modern world, uh, here's another example. This Apple Store here in Covent Garden used to be an amazing club called the Rock Garden, which like served hamburgers and stuff upstairs, and downstairs there's a dark, kind of dingy venue, where I played actually quite a few times. In fact, the first time I played there was, even before I was in Chelsea, I was still at school, so I was probably 16, 17, a band I was in a school called Metro, and we supported a band called Diversions, and Lena Lovich, if you know, she went on to sort of great things, sign of sniff, she was the singer in that band. And um, anyway, that's an Apple store. I don't know. Everywhere you go in the world, it's the same shit. Yeah, so anyway, this is the Apple Store, as I said, the Rock Garden. Um, used to go in through the front over there, and kind of walk downstairs, and uh, everyone played it later on. You two, the Smiths, everyone. And uh, I played it with Chelsea, 
Um, I think when I was in a band, me and Glenn Matlock were playing with a guy called Eddie Armani. We actually played in. I think I had a, my brother was driving me home and he went the wrong way down a one-way street and we had an accident. I had whiplash for about six weeks, but obviously you didn't sue people in those days. And you obviously get down to it through sort of here. And now that's the staff quarters for the Apple Store. So um, the actual space, I think it's the staff quarters for the people that work at Apple, but they wouldn't let us in, so... That's the end of that. Hey, so we've uh, just crossed over the thin divide of Shaftesbury Avenue, which um, is it, it's like, it's like the Rio Grande, where it divides Mexico from America. But that divides uh, Covent Garden from Soho. Now we're in Wardour Street, which is one of the most famous streets uh, in Soho. And this was an absolute punk rock mecca, this street. This where it says pro I don't mean to be like, you know, keep it like a needle stuck in a groove, this recurring theme, but. Where it says proper Byron hamburgers, that's a chain of burger thing. But that used to be an amazing punk rock pub called the Intrepid Fox. And I can remember they used to sit upstairs, watch, look across the road out the big windows uh, into the marquee. And in fact, Chelsea probably played the marquee, the old, the original marquee, well, not the very original marquee that was in Oxford Street, but the most famous one that was in Water Street here. And we probably played it at least five or six times. And um, I did it later on as well with the Hulk Club, with Glenn Matlock, a band I was in for a very short time, with Clark Dash, who was the singer, who went on to Johnny Hayes Jazz and all that stuff. And um, I used to sit up in that window, sit on the, you can't see it from here, but used to, I used to sit on that upstairs and watch the people going into the gig while I was having a drink, so that I could kind of gauge how full or empty the gig was going to be. But um, anyway, that was the Intrepid Fox, and that was an awesome place. Yeah, so this actually makes me quite happy, so like in deference to the past and how historically significant this place was, they've actually got a sign up here uh, for the old Intrepid Fox. There it is, you can see it. I mean, at the end of the day, you'd rather the Intrepid Fox was still there than a fire and proper hamburgers, wouldn't you? Just looking at this again, that is the original sign from the pub that obviously Byron Proper Hamburgers didn't want to demolish from 1784. And that is cool. Now this is probably the most famous club in the history of London, England, maybe the world and the universe, but I don't really, this was the marquee uh, in Wardour Street, number 90. I don't know, you used to come through here somehow and this was all part of it, which is now, I don't know what that is there. But um, I don't understand where they've got Keith Moon up there. I mean, there were bands that played it. I mean, I've still got some of the old, you know, like little posters and flyers you used to get. And every night there was someone really famous. I mean, you know, anyway. Keith Moon got the credit, it was like, it, the place was here for 25 years. Um, as I said, probably played this six times in Chelsea at least, the hot club. And um, what you used to do, used to play in the marquee, there was, who was here? Because we were all mates, I used to live in this place for like, I used to live here for like two years, because Dave Martin's girlfriend, the other guitarist in Chelsea, she was on the door. Um, Nigel, the manager, lived with the bass player of Chelsea, Jeff Miles, in Acton. So we basically we were allowed it for nothing. We used to hang out. I saw every band here from U2 to the police to um, God, to the Skids. I can't, you know, there was every night there was an awesome band playing. And um, it's a shame, I don't know. That plaque really should say 5,000 rock and roll celebrities played here, not just Keith Moon played here. It's actually ridiculous. Well done to Westminster Council for getting it fucking wrong again. But then what you used to do, you used to do your sound check in the, at the marquee, come out, walk down the road. On the other side of the street, there's a little club called the San Moritz, which I believe is still there. And after hours, you used to go into the San Moritz, have a drink in there, Sometimes I, used to, I was living in Chiswick at the time, I used to just walk home, it's like six miles. And uh, we would always, before you went on stage, 
come and have a drink in the ship. Uh, it's a very famous pub. Still here, thank God. <coughs> Fuller's pub. Uh, Fuller's beers, brewed in London. One of my favourite beers. And uh, there it is. There it is. It's still there. This is the ship. I'm thankfully, still here. It's been there well when I used to play in the market all the time. Yeah, it's some places right. come from drink. It's, um, yeah, it was a bit of an institution. Come up, st still looks the same inside, and uh, some things don't change. And uh, I'm grateful some things don't change. Let's have a look. Pretty much the same. You have a look, a bit of a grotty carpet back in the day. Yeah, there you go, it's a long bar. It's always down that side. Same sort of Soho renegades having a drink. Awesome. So, yeah, as I was saying, just uh, go for a drink in the ship, do your gig at the marquee. Afterwards, come to the Samur. It's one of the few clubs in the sort of 70s and 80s that was open till 3 a.m. And uh, it was an awesome den of iniquity. Just everyone would be down there taking cocaine off the tables and uh, drinking beer that was expensive. And um, but we had a good time. You can, you can see the marquee's just down there. The ship's just there. You can see the fuller sign. So it was all within very, very close proximity. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, I'd just get absolutely hammered and then walk home for Chiswick. And uh, or just stay at a mate's or with some nice girl that I found. I didn't say that really. So now, yeah, we've just walked up from San Marino's the ship marquee. We're at the northern end of Water Street. It's like the junction with Oxford Street's right there. And this place now, Peter Stringfellow's called Posh Chinsley Club. This used to be a place, a punk rock club called The Vortex. And uh, I don't know if you ever heard the song by The Jam, an A-bomb in Wardour Street, but that is about this club. I remember when Chelsea, I played here in probably May 1977, and Glenn Matlock was like, putting together the rich kids after being sacked from the Sex Pistols. And uh, he obviously he hadn't got me in mid year to, uh, to commit to join the band, so they did a gig. Um, kind of special guest to Chelsea with Mick Jones from The Clash uh, front in the band and I've got to say they were absolutely fantastic, miles better than they were and they got midgeon in my opinion and um, I can remember I was in the dressing room with Steve New who was my contemporary guitar player became a really really close friend uh, unfortunately sadly no longer with us uh, I was watching him play guitar and he was like this amazing looking kid he's like 17, I was young but he was younger than me and he was in the National Youth Jazz Orchestra and he was just sitting in the corner of the dressing room playing away and Mick Jones like noticed I was looking at Steve and he came up to me and he goes, good isn't he? Anyway, that's the board thing. So finally, the 100 Club, number 100 Oxford Street, uh, still here. Oh, absolutely amazing. First time I played here I think was in 1978. Obviously the original punk festival um, was in September 1976 that sort of kicked the whole punk scene in London, you know, into gear. We started here. Um, it's the only place I've ever been arrested when I walked off stage for hitting someone over the head with my guitar. I sort of regret that now, but he did really ask for it, trust me. And um, yeah, I've played it recently with Glenn Matlock, with Chelsea. I saw the cult play here, I did a secret gig here a few years ago before I was playing with them again. And uh, it's not my favourite place to play because it's like you have to walk through the crowd from the dressing room. There's a big pillow in the centre of the stage that always seems to get in your way. But if you walk over and see who's playing it, even now, you know, Theatre of Hate. UK subs, Lamberettas. That's awesome. So I'm glad we got a bit of history there, and uh, that's the end of my little tour. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.